call the Rochester Common Council meeting for December 19th to order. And our first uh, business on our agenda, of course, is uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. And Harry Webb, would you uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. <coughs> okay. As you all know, we're meeting uh, early this month uh, because of the Christmas holiday. Uh, so uh, the second order of business then is to uh, approve our regular uh, meeting uh, minutes from November the 28th, 2017. I would entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. And a second. Second. Moved by Goodman, seconded by Fitzwater. Those in favor? Six, zero. Thank you. And the Board of Public Works and Safety minutes from uh, November 9th, 22nd are for information only. Uh, we have no communications tonight. We have no public hearings tonight. Uh, it's just right down to new business. Uh, okay, the 2017 encumbrances and transfers. Shot it. A lot of times you guys will see these in January. Uh, this year, because of the flip-flop, bumping the council meeting up a little sooner. Uh, actually, it's meeting before the last board of work, so I shifted things backwards a little bit. And the encumbrances, these are uh, invoices that have came in that will be paid out in January, but the departments would like for it to be actually extended from this year's budget. So we just take these, this amount of money carry it forward into and essentially if they have a for instance if they have a thousand dollar account line item for uh, like in park general operating um, they as they had a thousand dollars budgeted for next year this would actually take it up to fifteen thirty four fifty seven for next year and then they still retain their thousand dollars that they had asked for in their budget for next year uh, and it doesn't decrease anything and again we can only do this in December at the end of the year knowing that they have it, that they have the money available and the appropriations to be able to carry it forward. The uh, park is, that one was a an equipment purchase. I believe that was for <coughs> the baby changing stations and the hand dryers for the park restrooms. And then the other one is for the Board of Public Works and Safety, and that was for the demolition of the building at 117th Street. That is the encumbrances. Do I have any questions on any of those? Either of those, I guess it's not sure. Will we have more we deal with then in February? Not. I, I've been scrutinizing the finances in the last week, trying to make sure that I had everything taken care of so that I could bring it to you tonight. And unless there's an anomaly after this week's pay that I didn't catch, um, which I, between Chris and I, we tried to catch everything we could before the Board of Works meeting, so hopefully there won't be. Uh, I'm not going to guarantee it, but there shouldn't be for next year. At least in conferences, I can say no. <coughs> any, uh, any other questions regarding the encumbrances and transfers? Do we need to, uh, do we need to read those leads into the public record at all? Uh, probably should, shouldn't we? Yeah. It's not a resolution or an uh, ordinance, so. For the record? If you want to put it on the record, you could uh, approve that. Yeah, I need to well, approve. I think what they're asking us is a movie. So we don't need the whole agree. thing individually? Yeah. I don't think so. If you, if you approve it, then you're, you're incorporating it kind of by reference. Okay. And I, I would move to approve the encumbrances from the 2017 budget as presented by Shotter. Okay, it's been moved by Councilman Smith and seconded by Councilman <coughs> to approve the transfers and encumbrances. Uh, 
Those in favor signify by raising your hand. It is unanimous. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, now we move down to the nomination of the 2018 council president. I'd like to just say before uh, we open the floor for nominations that uh, President Goodman has served very well this year, and I really appreciate his guidance and counsel on, on this uh, on this council. Thank you very much. I want to open the floor now for nominations for uh, president of the council for 2018. I apologize. On your agenda, the Greetown, the 4th Street update, or you guys have that? Yes. That's the next item. That's the next item. Nominated by Councilman Smith. <laughs> Councilman Garrett has seconded that. I, I would uh, entertain a motion to close the nominations. So, so, so moved by uh, Councilman uh, Miller, second on that. And Councilman Heidi seconds that. And those in favor of those two motions, hey, it's unanimous. Congratulations. Up, Brian? <laughs> Congratulations, Brian. Oh, my gosh. I think I got married like that one time. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, 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 oh. Can we cut that, please? Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Sorry, too late. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> okay, so you're gonna for another year, buddy. No, you have. You've done an excellent job. I don't think anybody up here would deny that. Uh, it's been a good year for you. Thank you. Okay, well that brings us to our guest. Uh, Jeremy, would you like to step up to the podium and introduce yourself? And tell us a little bit about the 4th uh, Street Project. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Jeremy Roshak with Donahue and Associates. Uh, we are the engineering firm uh, working for the city for the design of the 4th Street Improvements Project, which is uh, primarily a storm drainage project to uh, improve the, uh, the pedestrian access and improve the drainage uh, all the way from roughly the um, railroad uh, by the mill area all the way up to uh, State Road 25. Um, so uh, originally the project started when uh, we put together a grant application back in the spring of this year um, at that time, the grant application, it was for a community crossings grant uh, from INDOT uh, at a 25% uh, match by the city, and that would uh, uh, grant up to $1 million. So at that time, we, we kind of identified the project, we scoped it out at about $1.3 million worth of improvements we anticipated at that time which would have accounted for $1 million of index money and then the approximately $300,000 match by the city. Uh, since um, we found out was in October, I want to say, I don't recall offhand, but in that, yeah. Uh, in October. yeah, did provide a grant. The grant was in the amount of 670,000 as opposed to the $1 million mark. So. At that point, we, in order to meet the schedule required for this grant, um, we had already started the design work as well. Uh, so at that time, then we, we started looking at how we can work with the design to perhaps uh, achieve some cost savings through it. Um, what we also found through the course of the design, as we got more survey information, uh, as built information on the existing utilities, more in-depth info than, than what we had just in the GIS at the time, is that the, uh, uh, there were several utility conflicts, conflicts excuse me, uh, and a, uh, another unforeseen circumstance that, that arose with the drainage into um, Mill Creek uh, that accounted for additional costs that are now anticipated in the construction. 
So we're now at uh, about 60% design range. Uh, currently, our the estimated construction cost right now uh, is right about 1.9 million at this point. Uh, so everybody, I believe, has a packet that kind of looks like this, and it's color coded with the the opinion of cost that we put together. And then uh, on the second page is a map of the pro the scope of the project, and you can kind of see where the colors are our lineup. Um, so essentially we need to start in the yellow area. That, that's where the drainage will outfall into Mill Creek and then head north on Ohio Street or 4th Street. And then from that point you can see that's that's where we collect all the water between that Mill Railroad area all the way to 25. Um, so at this point we've had a uh, several conversations and during our last conversation I, I guess um, I'll leave it to Shahar and the mayor um, there were conversations of how to address these uh, these costs at this point yeah obviously if uh, the grant would have come in at the full one million dollars uh, we wouldn't be looking to fund more of this out of uh, some of our existing funds but in going back and trying to see what uh, what we could do with the project of only six hundred and seventy thousand and by the way that was no fault of ours that we only got six hundred and seventy thousand this year uh, NDOT had a tremendous amount of response for this grant program yep. and I would say correct me if I'm wrong uh, those who asked for a million and got 670 did pretty well. Yes. Yeah. So, so my understanding of it is uh, the city did pretty well in in what they got versus what they had asked. There were several communities who who were funded a much smaller percentage versus what they requested. Some did not receive any funding at all. The county participated for the first time last year and they uh, asked for a million and got a million dollars. Uh, like I said, the, the response was much greater this year. Uh, they again went and asked for a million and got just right at 500000 I believe. So uh, we didn't do anything that would uh, have restricted uh, what monies we got. They just didn't have as much money to pass around. They wanted everybody to get something. And they did give, as I understand it, preference to those who had not requested before so we did achieve some monies because we had not requested before so anyway uh, we, we massaged the program we looked at it we don't want to cheapen up what we're trying to do out there so thus the 300,000 uh, trying to uh, take from some other places um, Shada would you like to comment on that uh, one of the things, as we were sitting and as I've been looking at uh, finances, obviously one of the revenue sources, or well, a couple of different revenue sources we have, or funds that we have available, would be one or rainy day. If we take the grant amount, which was 670000 we also have our low end MBH fund, which was our one-time revenue that we received two years ago from the state and that was to, we were supposed to put 75% of that back to spend towards street and road improvements, 25% we could put into the rainy day, which is what we did. So I've got 375,000 for, that we were anticipating using towards the grant match. So total monies we have right now sitting available towards this particular project is a million 45. Brings us up about 176,000 short, or I'm sorry, 876,000 short. When you're looking at total numbers, uh, we can we we have a little over a million in our rainy day. We can also transfer money if we pull money out of rainy day. We can transfer money back in to kind of come up to keep that short up so that we're not depleting that all the way down. And we're fortunate in the fact that. The way the state has changed how we can do our rainy day transfers, it used to be we could only do them, I believe it was twice, once or twice a year. Now we can do them as we need them. And we can pull for multiple funds. Um, one of the, the other benefits is I was sitting there trying to, to look at all of this and come up with a, some kind of a strategic plan. 
is NVH is actually receiving real tax revenue now, and then come next year, we should start seeing some of the gas tax increase revenue that'll increase our NVH fund a little bit. So I, we haven't been doing any rainy day transfers out of NVH because I've always, that's one of my funds I'm always trying to protect because we have so much expense going out. Uh, right now, cash balance wise, they're in a position that I could do a 2017 transfer and a 2018 transfer. Now, mind you, I can only do 10% of the total budget, so we're only looking at about $140,000 per transfer. Um, but that would that I could put over back over into rainy day, and then we can also pull from our park operating. I figure about eighty thousand because again I don't want to shorten our cash balance in any of our funds just simply because we do have we only get paid twice a year, so I don't want to shortchange them. But we also I also know where our balance would be. Um, I have not this does not calculate in our December settlement yet, um, so I'm using numbers again because we're mid mid month I haven't received all that information in yet for receiving into for our December settlement. So the numbers I'm looking at don't include that. Um, you know, I'm hesitant on the general fund. Normally I would say pull 300000 out of general, throw it in a rainy day. That's what we've done in the past for those of you that have been on the council. Normally we target between two to 300000 um, Until we get our December settlement, I wouldn't I'm, I'm hesitant to say that much. I would say we can pull some out of general and shift it over. So all in all, I could probably easily put roughly four to five hundred thousand dollars, maybe a little bit more, back into rainy day relatively quickly if we pull the full eight hundred thousand out to complete this project from the railroad tracks all the way to twenty five. Um, <clears throat> quite honestly, when you look at that, we have a lot of pedestrian traffic on Fourth Street. And it's not the safest place to walk or ride your bike. Um, it, it's it's very concerning to us, uh, you know, the safety of our pedestrians out there. Plus, it's it's a great place you've got the sports kind. You got blacker out there, so you have kids out there. I think if we were to add the pedestrian traffic safety buffer with adding sidewalks, I think you know that would help parents to feel a little more at ease you know, with kids out in that area as well. Plus, we've got some potential economic development coming in that area that's going to expand it. So we're going to see some additional revenues coming in property tax-wise from that area as well in the next couple of years. So there's a lot of things that are kind of churning. It's just getting us to that point of to, uh, comfortable of taking this project and just completing it. Um, and that's why we wanted to bring it to you because with our grant, we have to have a decision made by the end of January, yes. is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, just because of the grant deadline. End of January. End of January. We'll be bringing the specifics to you in January. Yeah. We just wanted to give you guys something to start chewing on and think about and come up with any questions, information you might have with the project before we uh, made a final decision on what that, because obviously when it comes to any of these transfers or any day monies, that all has to come from you guys. You have to, to make all those decisions or approve all of those decisions. I'm sorry if I missed it earlier, but the balance, what's the balance in the rainy day fund now? Right now is a million fifty-seven thousand five hundred and eighty-nine and seventy five cents. So, I mean, we're I mean, right now we could take the entire eight hundred seventy-six thousand out, and we still would have money. But that's why I'm saying if we transfer money back in to try to help <coughs> offset some of that, we're not depleting our rainy day fund. Right. Because that's the last thing we want to do. We, we are in a position, financially, we're in a very good position and we don't want to lose that because we do have a lot of, we have a lot of projects right now and a lot of things, including utilities, that's coming down the pipe that we keep churning around. So we need to make sure that we're prepared for all of that stuff. Well, and this council should know that uh, within the last couple of months too, we've taken the steps to uh, annex the industrial park, the parts of the industrial park that are in the county. <coughs> Uh, we've got an investor that is committed to 11 acres of uh, you know, factory building in the uh, industrial park. And he's, he's reviewing the contract and we're hoping that will be solidified by the next meeting. We have we've got another investor who's uh, contemplating a 75,000 square foot spec building in that area out there. Uh, 
there's a lot of activity starting to pop up. As there's a lot of activity starting to pop up at the south end of Rochester, with the pilot folks going in down there and the corridor talk up, becoming more and more part of the program. So we have a lot of uh, a lot of things going on, a lot of positive things. So try to keep you in the loop as much as we can on all of that. And, and one last note on the, on the cost breakdown. And, and, uh, I'm sure you, um, and you may already understand this, but uh, part of the reason we did the breakdown was to see, you know, do we phase this out over time? And what the what the unfortunate drawback is phasing it out over time and, and perhaps getting a different funding source down the road for, say, the, the last section, your costs at that point will probably go up at 10 to 20% just because then you got new mobilization and demobilization and, and uh, other contract-related expenses that um, essentially, the more you do at one time, the more bang for the buck you get. So just something to keep in mind as well. Now, that was, yeah, that was some of the part of our yeah. end conversation we were having was just that. Do we take, you know, right now we know, and, and we do obviously, any costs that we're looking at right now do have contingency built in. Mm -hmm. So that way, um, hopefully to avoid any above and beyond anything that's here. Hopefully the cost will actually come in less than this. Um, that's our goal. So but as with any engineering project, they always build in those contingencies ahead of time. So we're prepared as best we can. I just came in, I understand this came in the first the first bid on this came in at a million three or something in June. First yes. yes. I, I'm for construction on three. Yeah. Okay, and that's when we thought we were getting that you know, that's when we applied for the public for the fight. And now we're at 190, you might as well say, yeah, 192. Are those just normal costs that would take it from the million three to so $1,600,000? So there's... Um, it happens to be a amount of money we got. We're getting from the green. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so those additional... Yeah. Those additional costs uh, are for essentially additional material and additional construction uh, so th there were uh, a number of utility conflicts that arose um, from existing utilities that are out there when, when yeah. we did the survey yes stormwater was a, a large portion of that oh well, i and i've been aware of it we all uh, we're, we're, and just uh, not saying anything uh, don't give it what who were the other people that did it we did you'd have I'm engineering sure. firm yes John about down to you. Did you get any of this? Engineering project, we're not required to. Uh, on what the first thing was that happened to you on your bid? Um, oh, when you? you guys came back, I'm assuming you're talking about. Oh, yes, on our. our uh, your yes, so yeah, when, when we met with the Board of Public Works, our. our uh, um, for our, uh, our design work uh, and, and our time. Um, actually, the, the board asked us to, to go back and trim out uh, some of the scope and, and some some of the uh, the compensation. So I think our costs so originally get cost came down by about twenty percent or so. Yeah, we said they were too high. Yeah, went back drawing the board down some things. So yeah, we we kind of worked and working pretty hard on it. We typically on a project like this, you actually go through kind of three stages of review. Um, so we. we we decided to, instead of having a 30% review, we decided to go straight to a 60% review. So that kind of reduced, um, reduced some of the costs. And then we could take out some of our meeting um, on the phone. And, and actually some of my business time here, I, I put four marketing, so you guys don't need to worry about that. Thank you, Karen. Now, and John, too, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I was gonna say, and one of the other things, too, is when we actually go out for the, for the actual construction, that we will we will have to solicit be the bid. full mm -hmm. average bidding and all of that stuff to solicit the construction of the project um, and, and document those regulations on i'm sorry Karen. when you were making your changes and readjusting um did that in any way affect the size of the piping that was going to be used in any of these phases um, because we it was stated that it was absolutely necessary that we change the sizes because some of them much too small. She's thinking about the, uh, you're thinking about the, uh, yeah. 
the other project? Yeah. The other oh, I'm on the wrong project. This is a separate project. This oh, is. This is. But actually, this will tie right in. I was going to say, I thought they overworked over. This will tie right yeah. into that project on the main street and uh, Ninth Street. They're, they're individual projects, but they're they're they adjoin. Yeah. They're basically <coughs> one So when you did rework it, then, yeah. what type of changes did you make in the structure of the costs? So what we had to, where those additional costs came from is that they're working around, so um, additional labor costs are going to be required for some of the conflicts to avoid uh, the existing water main in a few locations as well as uh, the existing sewer along Ohio Street. Um, so it's, it will require um, harder labor, um, more careful labor, which requires more time and more manpower by the contractors. It will require more materials, uh, more more joints and fittings um, to work around these uh, existing utilities. In addition, we need to relocate into more of the pavement areas. So whereas we didn't account for full replacement of the pavement, um, it's now going to be required because of some of the existing utilities that are there. And then in addition, the original um, plan was to run open channel um, from the south end of Ohio Street into Mill Creek. And uh, in our conversations with IDEM about it, they had determined on this one that they would require us to have a closed conveyance system and not allow an open channel because it goes through the city's well field. So there and again, we, we have additional high costs and additional, the excavation kind of offsets, but then the work to put the excavation back together essentially. Yeah, that, that was an interesting process. You talked about IOSHA. I am, we talked to three different people, got three different assessments of what right. we needed to do out there. Basically, we ended up taking the most stringent one and saying, we need this, we won't have any issues. That sound familiar? Yeah, I The cost of being, uh, I thought it was going to be the, the subcontractor for the. No, we are we're just doing the design of the work. So so we are essentially acting as an agent of the city in the design and then through the bidding process, we will help with that as well. Um, so if there's any questions during construction pertaining to materials or, or how it needs to be routed or rearranged, uh, we might be able to assist on that end of things. But once the construction bids come in, we're, it, it, we're kind of out at that point. So we don't get into any construction or installation or anything. That'll be a, a contractor and that shot us have that'll be done under a, a public bid format. And this is one of the, this is what we've got Randy we've done uh, a lot, these, these projects. He's the, our, kind of our project manager, liaison between the uh, contractors and the engineering firm mm -hmm. would be the man on the site being the guy handling handling that. I apologize for his not being here tonight, folks. He had a problem out at the waste treatment plant. He and Marcus are in an issue out there. You got to send him that note. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any Anything else for Jeremy? Well, thanks for coming up tonight. Appreciate it. You thought uh, Randy and Jer and uh, Marcus were going to be here. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. My, my last question to the council would be in thoughts of all of this, what I need to know from you is if you want me to prepare for the, next, for the January council meeting, all of the documentation that you would need, that I need, required for, of you um, for approvals for all of this, for any expenses, transfers, additional appropriations, all of that stuff, because if we do, it I have to advertise uh, all of that information, especially if we need to do an additional appropriation out of rainy day, um, which I actually wouldn't have to do that in January, I can do that later, but if to get all the preparation paperwork ready, if you want me to go ahead and prepare that so it's ready for the next council meeting, then at that point. You have to have this done within January. Right? right, but I'm it asking. Might be a good idea to have everything so we can tie it up in one knot, wouldn't you say? That's what I'm asking. Is that if you want me to do it all in one, one or sort of phase it out? Because I can do both depending on which, like the additional appropriation, I can do that. Do it all one. Okay. Yeah, and I think the 
to satisfy the six hundred and seventy thousand dollar grant we have to show that we have the uh, the bids advertised out there by what the end of april Fe no february February. So okay. yeah, right now the plan is to yeah, the visit not through February yeah. and have somebody uh, have somebody contracted beginning of March, so I then by mid March, late March. That was why I wanted to know because I just if you want it all in one shot or want me to break it up for you. No. Okay. Okay. Thanks again, Jeremy. We have no unfinished old business, uh, so it gets us right down to the parking heads. Uh, Chief Butler came in on his day off. Thank you, Chief. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Good evening. Month of November, Strike for Fires, two in Rochester Township, one in the city. Mutual aids, one in Henry Township, one in the Union Township. Auto fire alarms, one in Rochester Township. Calls for smoke, one in Rochester Township. Vehicle fires, one in Rochester Township. Rush fire, one in Rochester Township. Uh, space heater, one in the city. Accidents, three, drove the ambulance once from the accident scene. Medical assist, 11 in the city. Three in Rochester Township, drove the ambulance once. CO checks, one in the city, one in Rochester Township. Service calls, two in the city, one in Rochester Township. A total of 36 with one drill. Any of your questions, that concludes my report. Uh, you mentioned to me the other day in passing, we have uh, some volunteers who have not qualified for their Class A uniforms. Correct. Uh, I sent two more down to India to get uh, fitted and, and ordered. And so, um, what it is, uh, the, the volunteers, their first year as a volunteer, they're on probation for a year, and then once they're done, with their year of probation, they get voted on by the body again. Um, and then once they're, they, they're voted on regularly, they get their class A's. We send them down the top to get their blue shirt. The volunteers order their, their badge. Um, we order the traditional helmets and the department pays for the leather shield in front. So that's what they get once they complete the year of probation. And the class A's is the, the icing on the cake. Now, I don't know how many of you here have seen our firefighters in their class A's, but they are sharp. Really nice looking bunch, Tom. Any uh, questions for Tom? Thank you, Chief. And again, thanks for coming. Anyway. Yep. Chief Shots? For the month of November, we had 22 total accidents. Two of those were personal injury. We issued 71 warnings, 73 total offenses, 41 case reports, 604, I'm sorry, 670 calls for service, 50 lockouts, five towed vehicles, and 17 people incarcerated. And then you can see the crimes those individuals were allowed for. <coughs> Uh, other than that, um, our two new officers go to the academy in February. I've uh, got to get them to Fort Wayne to order their academy uniforms. Uh, we had active shooter training for the department at Riddle School two weeks ago. Um, and then we've had a couple more trainings this month, uh, physical tactics and state mandates, just to finish up the year. Uh, and that's all about all I have, unless you guys have any questions. Okay. Um Oh, any questions for Chief? Yeah, I, I, a few weeks ago in our staff meeting, uh, Lenny and uh, Chief Shots, and I think Tom was even involved, and I know Randy has been involved, but uh, the group uh, went down to the Peachtree uh, Mall, took a look at that area down there going into the Kroger's. Peachtree Village. Peach Street Billy got the pylon entrance by Harvey's. <clears throat> and that relates to this ordinance 14-2017 amending the traffic code. You want to go through that sheet? Yeah, like, like the mayor said, um, we had talked about what options we could do there. Um, it was brought up just to make it one way. So uh, Lenny, Tom, and I went down there to look at the area and see if it was going to be feasible, I think with minimal work, uh, taking those pylon bases out, uh, some striping and, and some signage, I think it would work great. Um, it's 
Because inevitably those, those plastic pylons, wherever they are, they get rain over and they don't last more than a week or so. The semis, it's narrow enough as it is for the semis to make that turn. Um, the, when we made it the, the right turn only when you're heading out of there, it definitely helped with uh, safety, the safety factor. You know, we haven't had any accidents and um, it, it did help that, but it, it's, it's kind of one of those anomalies, what do you do with this? So I think this is just the next evolution is just make it one way and see how it works. And if it doesn't work out or, or there are problems that we didn't foresee, we have a change back to it. It's kind of a narrow turning area in the semis that literally just torn all of those. Right things. now, yeah, that incoming lane is is narrowed by those, and I understand why. Um, you've got to yeah, put those there to to eliminate that left turn, but it's just made a mess in there as well. Thank goodness nobody was driving a grain truck, right? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I saw people were almost driving. Are you not supposed to drive on those? No, you're not supposed to drive on those. That's not like the, the McDonald drive. That's, that is our that drive. That is our drive. That is our road. All the yeah. way back, straight back. All the way right. straight back behind uh, Kroger because that is so a so utility access. It's, it's easy to go back. Lift station. Lift station back there. Yeah. Okay. Right down school view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we've discussed it with the property owners there. We've been into the, all of the store owners that would be affected right there, and none of them have any problem with it. Uh, so, thanks for what we've talked with. RVs don't have an issue? Oh, no. Yeah. So we went in and the manager said, no, that would be, be fine. I have any problem with that. Uh, Kroger's, everybody talked to about it. Oh, I have, unless you guys have any questions about it or anything else for that matter. Okay. okay. Thanks, Jay. Thank Thanks you. Jay. Lenny. Wilson's property to uh, Monticello Road, and I'm sure 
it all needs it. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm giving, giving that, Lenny a bit of a run I'm, time. We, get, uh, we've had some flooding out there. That right? uh, pretty much drains all the west side of the town. Yeah. So, we want to keep that flowing good. And I know, like, right behind middle school, there's grass sticking up out of that creek. And that's just a big buffer yeah. for that water, you know. So, um, we get that cleaned up, and I'll get with Paul. He's he did, he did a uh, pretty nice job. I mean, it looks a lot cleaner. So we'll, uh, I'll be talking with Mary in the, in the coming months and see if we can get that cleaned up a little bit better if you guys uh, approve. And, um, other than that, and, uh, What's the uh, estimated uh, time for cleaning that up? Any it, thoughts? It's okay. It's like a uh, couple of days. In, really? in, okay. in, in, in between jobs just to do that little, it's not two weeks blocks. Yeah, no okay no great a guy with the that's good on the escalator could probably do it in a couple of weeks yeah so it's just a matter of getting it's mostly the sand and uh silt and like i said aquatic matter that you dip out of there you, if you're not hauling the weight it's laid along the side of the bank and you're just going you know but um other than that we've been Preparing the trucks, uh, it's, it's no plowing equipment for winter as we already plowed and then sanding. Um, we cleaned up the snow and hauled away the snow from downtown. That's what we'll have. Let's make sure we get the uh, leaf machine service really, really working good before we get them all put up, okay? Yeah. You know, that's uh, something well, we want to do when we pull them out. Up. Yeah, we we'll usually clean them up, but we don't service them until usually we go to use them next year. Yeah, I know we pulled one out this year and we had a broken hitch, so we want to go over and pretty Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, so any questions for Lenny? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you, Lenny. Okay, and I mentioned before Marcus and Randy have an issue down the waste treatment plant. They're not here, and Derek. He's on vacation, Johnny. Imagine that. <laughs> okay. Going down to uh, the committee reports, uh, the Area Planning Commission, uh, Karen? Yes, there was a meeting, and I'm sorry. Really? Yes, there was a meeting. They got a Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> you have to understand that sometimes our meetings go long, even though we Okay. <laughs> But anyway, um, I was not able to attend, so I do not <laughs> West of Caribbean. Okay. <laughs> uh, West, which one? West, which one? Step up the podium, bud. Okay, Karen. Well, anybody have any questions for her? <laughs> Where were you, Karen? No, <laughs> boy. Nursing my hand. Okay, all right. Uh, Councilman Goodman, uh, Fedco report. Yeah, FEDCO met December 7th. Um, I was not in attendance, but I do have the minutes. Um, reported a checking account balance of 36,729.68. Operating reserve balance 72,563.10. Uh, 2018 officers, uh, Greg Loving was the past president. He served on the board for 10 years and decided it was time for him to step down. Um, so he's He's leaving the board, so that puts Brian Johnson in the role of president for 2018. And uh, Greg last week called me and asked if I would step into the role of vice president, which I have accepted. So 2018, I'll be the vice president on the Fedco, which will put me on the executive board, and that will mean that the county and the city now have representation on the executive board. Which I think is a great idea. That that's long overdue. Um, as Mayor mentioned, uh, Frank Boley is a gentleman out of Peoria uh, with the machine shop. He has a purchase agreement in front of him for acreage on 4th Street, the Blackerter property. That seems to be moving, well, moving forward really well. Getting that project solidified is a key component in possibly luring a Caterpillar assembly plant to the area. So um, that's where you know, everyone's looking to uh, Move that along. Um, Harry Webb is the new president of the Rochester Downtown Partnership. 
sorry, 2018. And as far as the uh, business roundtable went, all good reports, all of the, the local businesses are busy. A lot of companies are adding equipment, which includes the foundry and uh, machine casting specialties. And we've added some equipment as well. So that is my report. Yeah, I was in attendance. Uh, locally, business seems to be very good. Our manufacturers, which is great news. Uh, Lau is actually working uh, overtime during the holidays, paying triple time, I guess, for the holiday, uh, Christmas Eve. Uh, they're working Christmas Eve, so things are going, going well. Do uh, you have any questions for Councilman Goodman? I do want to congratulate and thank you, Councilman Goodman, for at least getting the minutes from the meeting there. Some people think you get the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Academy that uh, presented their idea of helping and assisting in the development of a splash pad in Rochester. Uh, that is something the board had talked about uh, throughout the year is looking into a splash pad. So they were receptive and the board agreed that, it, um, that they could go ahead and pursue moving forward with the research of the project. Um, so that's in the works. As mentioned earlier, I think by shot of partitions, baby changing tables, hand dryers for the bathrooms of the so park are in and being stored. Um, ugly truck has completed the tree trimming in the parks. And the golf course, the board voted unanimously to purchase a rough mower for the golf course. And they were talking about doing, replacing quite a few pieces of equipment at once. Um, but we're gonna phase that out over next five or six, seven years and we get on a better cycle so we don't have all of the uh, machines breaking down at one time like we currently do. So, um, Carrie Weaver, her term was up and um, so that was her last meeting and Ron Zeisner is the new replacement. Okay, any questions for council tonight? Thank you, Mason. Harry is not here tonight, so I'll take us down to the uh, BZA and the Council on Aging, Councilman Smith. No report on BZA, and to be honest, I don't know whether our meeting has been moved to tomorrow night or whether it's uh, next week, but I have not heard about that yet. Uh, Council on Aging did meet yesterday. Uh, we did we kind of have a combination Christmas party meeting for the last uh, meeting of the year. It's a carry-in and, and uh, we worked through lunch. But, uh, so that was nice yesterday. Uh, we reviewed with what Russ. Is, sir? <laughs> well, there were just mostly appetizer kinds of things. Oh, okay. some cheese, some turkey wrap things. <laughs> I think what all was there. I don't know. Yeah, 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 it was nice. A lot of cookies and other stuff. Um, we did review with uh, Rusty at length uh, the uh, transpo report, and basically, um, trips are going to be pretty much equal to uh, what they were a year ago. And it's kind of interesting to note that. Over the last five years, uh, they, they've gotten certainly a lot more efficient at what they do because uh, over the last five years, about the same amount of trips in 2012, but we have uh, cut an average trip down from 7.03 miles a trip to 5.78, and that is just by combining uh, more trips into one, going to the end of town and back and forth, 
uh, with multiple people and so certainly more efficiencies have been built into that uh, revenue is up just a little bit for transpo you know i keep i keep going back and back all the trips and the training record is just superb it is yeah. about 180 trips a day jeez what what are the qualifications to drive the transport? They do have to pass a um, rather extensive uh, physical, which is, uh, we can't even, no doctors in Fulton County are certified to do the physical. Uh, we were, in prior years, able to have them done in Rochester, but a uh, hospital at Fort Wayne came over and did them. That's out now, so we sent our, I think Rusty said it was Frankfurt that they went to. Uh, they, have, they have to be able to, they do squats, they have to get down on their knees and perform some uh, things while in the physical, just uh, because of the requirements for driving a transpo vehicle. So. The, the requirements are pretty stringent. It's yeah, it's not it's it's not an easy thing to pass actually. Isn't it the uh, it's the uh, standard federal highway DOT physical correct? Right. Because we are employees, our street department employees, and, and we employees have to have right. that physical. And yeah. you're correct. Um, there's not a certified position. Yeah. yeah. And. Uh, Rusty said just the, the act of, uh, of being the ability to fasten a wheelchair into the van is uh, very difficult. So. Yeah, there's a, now is that part of, because the standard chauffeur's license doesn't include that. Isn't, that's the additional addendum that they have to do for um, right. persons with disabilities. Right. Sorry. Yeah. It's just, I, it's just interesting to me the different levels of, because I know what we have to do for our CDL drivers, what my brother does for his CDL, and what they, it's just interesting. <coughs> so we yeah. Well, I mean, with the record and everything, I think it's not surprising that there's more to it than just go down and drive the van. You know? Yeah. No, oh, absolutely. Yeah. But the record is incredible. It certainly yeah. is incredible. The, uh, Budget for 2018 was presented. We will act on that at next month's meeting. We are anticipating including a raise for uh, all the employees, the drivers. There's not been a raise for two years, so we'll see that go into effect in January. We had spent several meetings uh, in special session reviewing personnel issues and we made some changes. We had Attorney Perkins review those for the council and those uh, were presented and approved at yesterday's meeting. And the employee dinner was uh, canceled because of inclement weather and that's been rescheduled for January 27th and if anybody's interested the Christmas dinner for the uh, Council on Aging folks uh, is uh, the 21st of December and I believe that's the end of my report if there are questions have any questions for Councilman Smith? <coughs> Very good report, Marty. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Chase is not here this evening, so that drops us down to the tree board and EMS. Uh, Councilman Fitzwater. Neither board met to his marlis. Uh, felt like a previous discussion, though. I need to make some phone calls. We need to have a Christmas party, though. <laughs> <laughs> You've been slighted. I know. You took the two of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, water board, John? I'll call Marvin as soon as I get yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> There's some real so short, short spots here. Yeah. It'll be in January, January, that'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, of course, the meeting started with the pledge. 
an update was presented by Derek to the board that everything was operating as normal and well. Uh, Derek gave uh, the chemical quotes for the companies that were selected and chlorine was Jones Chemical, salt was Cargill, fluoride was Water Solutions. Election of officers, Carolyn nominated Marv as president. Marvin, Marvin nominated uh, Carolyn as secretary and Keith as board member. January meeting is now going to be on January 8th. September 3rd meeting is now going to be on September 4th. The board tabled the South 31 project discussion until the March meeting. John Query gave an update uh, from HWC, gave an update on the Monroe Street project, and said he would be back in mid-January to talk about the Monroe Street uh, project and the South 31 project in a little bit more detail. He just happened to be in the area and stopped in to visit. But he knew our meeting was going on, he stopped in to see us. Uh, Derek presented the uh, board of the uh, employees taking vacations for the month of December. That's <laughs> Derek. Uh, and uh, that date was presented by Derek to the board on the water department's monthly uh, duties for the month of November. Everything else was just uh, fine and dandy with the water department. Things are going smooth. That's what we want. And uh, the motion to adjourn was passed 2 0, and that's it. Any questions from anyone? Thank you, John. I'd you all if we have a Christmas party. Yeah. <laughs> Please let us know if it's, uh, even if it's scheduled in January, we could be there. <laughs> okay, yeah, you all right. Okay, the uh, last thing on the uh, agenda is reports of committees is the Rochester Downtown Partnership and Mr. Harry Webb is here to uh, give us a report. First of all, Harry, thank you for being here tonight and uh, second of all, congratulations on your store downtown. It's looking really, really nice. Finally have uh, windows. You can see out. Yeah, and, and, and Garrett doesn't have a window in the front of his house. So they're ahead of him, okay? Still waiting. Just pass those down. And then this paper here will be the other one here. Will be yeah, there is a work plan and basically a list of board members. Thank you. Start of a you know well January will be the start of a new year, and um, I've been elected to serve as president. It's kind of a um, kind of a change because there hasn't really been a much of a transition. I wasn't vice president last year, so with Amy moving um, kind of off the role and Sarah taking a full time job, it kind of left a vacuum. Um, but I think we have a we have really developed a really good work plan for next year. You know, part of, um, you know, with Stephen Ray, the gentleman who does the grant rating for FEDCO and others, and also the liaison for um, RDP, helps us create this work plan. And um, I think there's four pages of that plan that kind of um, highlights what each of the uh, committees will be working on for 2018. And um, I don't have a copy of it right here in front of me, but get on some of the highlights of it. Um, the main the main focus of the organizational committee will be to figure out ways to raise money. We are a 501c3. We are uh, organized now to take the donations, but there really hasn't been an active solicitation of funds, and that is we are going to start working on having you know, having some assets to work with so we can go on and do projects instead of um, retrospect or like for instance this downtown uh, very successful promotion we had with the Santa stroll um, and she spent half her time trying to raise the money and the other half the time trying to put off the bed she pulled off a major event but it'd be so much better if we have had three thousand dollar budget and said here go do this event and she could have spent the rest of her time putting that together. And uh, so that, and that's kind of you know, the same situation with the benches and the bike racks. You know, we spend an awful lot of time coming up with an idea and developing it and then have to come and ask for money. And it would be so much better if we had assets that we could, as a 
more and move forward and say, okay, next year we've got X number of dollars that we can spend on doing things. What are we going to do with this money? Well, I, um, I'll tell you what, Doc, I'd say first and foremost here, and glad you got her as the chair of promotion. She was very, Bettina Zabel. Oh, that's who we're yeah, out. she is. She, she was yes. very impressive. Very impressive. This roster of uh, the board is ex expanded dramatically. We've had what a, a lot of traction. You can see there are some very effective people that are part of this organization now. And uh, Bettina, being the chairman of the promotions committee, has injected a lot of energy. And she hit it out of the park for that sound yeah. show. I mean, it was a, I mean, I've been downtown for a long time and had Santa come every year. Never have had the uh, response that we had this year for that event. And you know, the weather was very cooperative, but we were very busy the entire evening. Stayed open an extra hour and a half, and um, it was good. And I, everybody just had fun. Mm -hmm. just a, you know, mm -hmm. In fact, we had a couple thousand people downtown, and you know, kids are having fun. And, um, my parents are having fun. There's a lot of stuff going on. And she's full of ideas for how to improve it. So, um, I think we're going to see some great events this summer as well. The only problem we had was poor Chris Lee drove all the way from South Bend to get to read Jackie Orlarski's proclamation. <laughs> but he, but he's working on time, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> but he did have a nice view of everything that was yeah. going on. So. Yeah, it was. Um, Mason Hyde is chairing, chairing up the Economic Vitality Committee, and they've made some strides this last year, and we now have a the drainage leakage report that is going to be a good tool for them and they um, we have a uh, master list of all the inventory properties and they've got some really good plans for next year as well the design committee is going to be chaired by lance nelson um, that was the committee i was been over the last couple of years uh, our board is our committee has also expanded dramatically and um, their main focus of the design committee are going to be two different um, OPRA funded grants, um, one being the application of a Main Street Revitalization Grant, and yet, which will be about uh, trying to do major facade renovation for downtown. I'll talk about that here in a second. And then the other one would be a DRG grant, which would be uh, to purchase and um, install wayfinding signage in, in Rochester in general, not necessarily in downtown, but throughout the community. Um, those are two OCRA funded grants that the city will be, uh, hopefully be the applicant for. Um, those are big projects for us and we are, um, um, I think, well on the way of getting moving with those. I won't read into all the details of the work plan, but um, having this plan and this, this thing all interfaces mm -hmm. with um, what FEDCO is doing, what the Redevelopment Commission is doing. So everybody is finally, I think, moving in the same direction on getting some projects established. And I think everybody has kind of um, come to terms with RDP and, and a mainstream organization and is it necessary, is it not necessary, has been debated for 25 years in this community, but we have never successfully brought in outdoor outside money mostly because we did not have an effective major organization. And so you know, our goal is to have that effective organization and to really help open, open the doors to get in some federal and state dollars that we can use to improve downtown. Um, the Main Street Revitalization Program is one of the handouts I gave you. Um, and that's what we're kicking off first. This is a uh, okra block grant, and they, they um, the community development block grant program can be used for three different things. These are up to a half million dollar requests, and a community is eligible to do one block grant, I believe, about every seven years. Um, it is a scored project. Um, we have been told by um, couple different individuals that Rochester sits in a very good position to receive a um, Oprah Brock block grant. Um, and one of the three things, in the past, we were kind of saving it for streetscaping. We had thought that we would use the half a million for that. But now with the stormwater project looming and the fact that it's going to be very destructive to sidewalks and everything, we've shifted that 
uh, to a facade renovation program. We don't want to wait around for this and kill another three or four years while we wait for the stormwater project to develop. We want to move forward with a facade grant program. What, what this will do, I guess the good thing for the council is it really should not cost the city of Rochester any money. The city of Rochester is going to be the applicant, would have to be the applicant for this grant. Um, money would all funnel through Shada. Uh, it could be up to a half million dollars, but the property owners, the business building owners, are going to be the ones who kick in, kick in money. But the good thing is it could be a renovation that would be, uh, we don't know the complete terms of what next year's grant is going to be, but this year it was an 80% match. So a building owner could get windows, um, do facade work like the drugstores had, or perhaps a roof, and get 80% of the project cost covered. With the half million dollars, we would hope to do 10 to 15 major projects in downtown Rochester. Uh, the theater was going to be an applicant for this um, just themselves. They would not have a $500,000 project, and so we are definitely um, wanting to include the theater in this, this $500,000 request. It could um, allow them to focus on raising money for both, more for the inside of the building and we can help them dramatically by helping pay for the marquee and getting rid of the Flintstone Rock and that kind of thing on the outside of the theater. Um, that would be part of this half million dollars. There have been several building owners who come to me who were excited about it and we're going to have an informational meeting on Thursday, January 18th, I believe is the day. Um, I'm going to hold it at Jaredi's at 6 p.m. We're going to be putting out invites to all downtown building owners to come and learn about this and find out how much interest there is. Um, there's also a, one of the other handouts I gave you was Stephen Ray's um, timeline, what would be required uh, to do to apply for that grant. He is a grant writer and he's already funded, so there, there again, there's no cost for a grant writer. So initially, I would just like the council to get the council's blessing. It won't be officially a vote to apply until we've had a chance to get all the building owners um, in a room and find out how much interest there is. But assuming we would like to move forward with that if the um, council so approves. Um, any questions on that? Basically, you're looking for a nod from the council as to whether the city would be the sponsor of the Yeah, should we keep moving forward on this? Because I don't want to do it if the city's obviously not going to be the spot. The city has to be the applicant. Yes, we probably Mason and I probably aren't in favor of this. Oh, that was pretty ordinary. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't go down 8th Street. Yes, it does. Oh, the macro? It does. It's part of the historic corridor. It will require the yo-yo blight statement we've been having. We've had a, you know, the city, the downtown area was blighted. Yeah. And then it had to become spot blighted to take on the theater. And now we're going to have to redesignate the area as blighted. But we have all the language and the code. So if we move forward, that will be a definition of the area would have to be considered blighted. So you did get confirmation. Oh, as, as, as Terry thinks, it has been <laughs> right. spotlighted on the theater. He's okay. not 100% sure. Well, I'd say but it's been kind of confusing. So, and like I said, he's probably the same boat as I. And the, really, the only people that care is Okra. But it depends on which grant you're applying for, is how the designation has to be. When, uh, <laughs> the theater couldn't apply in a blighted area just by themselves. If you're blighted, then you have to all apply. So they had to be removed so they could apply, then they didn't apply. So now we're going to put the, the blighted area back over the whole area again so we can show all and apply. So all yeah. and apply. Okay. Okay. You're, you're, you're that would take council action as well. But obviously, we don't need to address that until we say the next step is really getting the building owners in a room right. and having the grant writer and that we have. Um, 
probably going to be using the same architect that I use on my building. She did the downtown plan that we've been using as a guidebook the last three years. She's the one that drew up all the spec drawings that are in that plan. She's very familiar with Rochester. She's the one that came to me and says, why are you not applying for this? Because she, did, she just received and did the work for, I think, Greenfield. Uh, there's only three applicants last grant cycle for this half million dollars and two of them are funded. One was just sent back for more information. So there's a really good shot that it won't be that competitive. Can you have any idea on an average what uh, a what, uh, building owner can expect? As a well, you know, what would depend on what they would want to do, but you know, replacing windows, getting the windows back to, um, to the full size window, double pane glass window, which is expensive. Um, that this could be handled in a project like this. There's a lot of roofs needing work. I think, um, you know, there's several building owners expressed interest in their roof. And some of it might just be custom cosmetic things. You know, maybe taking some of the older, um, you know, Lance has talked about his barrel <coughs> awning, taking that off, trying to get the wood off and exposing the brick and you know, doing some, so I think projects could be in range of you know, fifteen thousand to eighty thousand dollars. The theater is probably going to be in one hundred seventy-five thousand dollar range project cost. So, um, depending on what the building owner is willing to do, not take on a large roof, obviously that could throw the cost back as well. So it wouldn't be a situation. I don't want to put you on the spot, but it wouldn't be a situation where the nominal match, uh, Harry Webb, you have a storefront, all take. Well, it would have been nice to know about it two years ago. Right? <laughs> but I mean, you'd have, you'd, have, you'd have a major investment involved in it. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. It, you know, the, um, I would have paid 20 cents on the dollar versus paying gotcha. 80 cents on the dollar. Bill. Gotcha. So, yeah, this, yep. you know, if, if we get a half million dollars worth of projects, yep. or let's say we get three quarters of a million dollars worth of projects, then yep. we may have to make them more competitive or make the building owners increase their match in order to, um, you know, get the work done. So we can leverage as much work as possible with that half a million dollars. Um, we may score projects as, well, okay, we're gonna pay 80% on windows, we're gonna pay 60% on our own. So, you know, who knows how we'll put all those together until we really know what the interest is and how many dollars we're really looking at. But I think we can easily spend half a million dollars well, I'd be spending seven hundred fifty thousand for a week, but and what that would have a huge impact. That couple with the stormwater project and maybe stellar down the road, we'll get get somewhere. We're still lucky to have you at the head of this and things are doing. Well, I'm just glad they quadrupled my salary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, talk a little bit about that. Maybe I'll run for another year. We, have, we <laughs> expedited your windows for you. <laughs> we, we've had good people involved, <laughs> but you're going to take it to the next level. Well, it's, I, we've got a lot of good people in place, so yeah. we need a lot of help. So. Well, you know, absolutely. I, again, I want to, Paul Parent, what Marty said, you have been a leader downtown. You really have, Mary. And I mean, even going back two years ago with the uh, pseudo-veteran effort and everything, you've been a leader. You care about Rochester. Oh, sure. We need we need more more here. That's exciting. You know, I think it's I think a lot of people are excited about the possible vision of a downtown community and hopefully we can continue to move that forward. But you know, it all starts with right here in this room. You know, leadership for uh, anything we do downtown starts in this in this room, and it has to be a concerted. Everybody moving in the same direction. And in the past, we've all been fragmented on what we want to do and what we want to do. Um, you know, these business plans we've come up with and stuff. It's moved us into where, at least as an organization, we're moving in one direction. But it really requires consistent leadership from the mayor and city council all the way down. And we can be the workforces. Of really, this council. Thanks, Harry. All right, thanks. Yes, sir.
And if all of you want to join Harry and I, you guys are having a Christmas party? Yes. I was just going to say, we're going to have a Christmas party because we're going to stand outside and just stare at the front of this building. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it beautiful? It is gorgeous. I'm going to end up wrecking my car at some point because I keep driving by. Those windows, those windows, seriously, they're what, about 200 pounds or so? A little bit. Sure. You're not going to have many birds break one of those windows. Okay. All right, that uh, takes us down to 88 concerns, which we have none. Uh, any legal uh, issues, Andy? Uh, just the, uh, the ordinance uh, 14 2017 uh, might require uh, one part of explanation. Uh, okay. And that is the, uh, it makes reference to the repeal of a prior uh, ordinance and, and most don't uh, and so that bears some explanation when I, I saw the report of the road uh, uh, East Street Village Road that sounds really familiar and what I was remembering is when we turned it into a tunnel they had one direction so when I went back and reread that ordinance it was clear to me that it would uh, uh, be less confusing to simply repeal that uh, because it, it, it also created a new uh, schedule under chapter 75 so I thought it would be easier to just repeal that and uh, uh, make it the uh, <coughs> one way as, as requested. So that's that's why it would be used and why the preference of repeal of the higher elements and that was the one that made that run right turn only at name and it also uh, uh, which created kind of a new a new category of the schedules I think.
God because there would be there would be some problems with 2019 because it's the year before the census. And why, why they chose that as a marker, uh, I think, has to do with uh, uh, political machinations that happen in larger areas uh, uh, with, with voting in districts and that type of stuff. But um, uh, that's one of the rules, and so we don't want to see it spill over. And I don't think it will for this kind of thing. should move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, you can set it up so you pass the ordinance uh, and tell them you're Anything else? Thank you. Okay, if we move down to, uh, speaking of ordinances, if we move down to ordinance 14-2017, the traffic code amendment, I would uh, entertain a motion to uh, add the first reading Ordinance 14-2017. Uh, these are the ones. I, I would move uh, to read in its entirety. Second. Those in favor of reading Ordinance 14-2017 in its entirety, please signify by raising your hand. It's unanimous. Uh, Councilman Good. Ordinance number 14-2017, an ordinance amending the traffic code. Whereas the Common Council of the City of Rochester that certain portions of the city's traffic regulation should be amended. Whereas the city previously amended Chapter 75, Schedule 3, and created Chapter 75, Schedule 5 entitled Other Prohibitions by Ordinance Number 1 2014. Whereas the city now believes that Peace Street Village Road should be a one way street in the westerly direction, thereby eliminating the need to regulate traffic approaching Main Street, the subject of Ordinance 1 2014. Now therefore be it ordained by the Common Council City of Rochester that Ordinance 1-2014 is hereby repealed. Now therefore be it further ordained by the Common Council of the City of Rochester that Chapter 75, Schedule 4 of the Rochester City Code entitled One Way Streets and Alleys is hereby amended to include the following. Street, Peace Street Village Road, location from Main Street West, entire road, direction westbound. Okay. I would uh, entertain a motion. Uh, well, first of all, is there any discussion on the first reading of Ordinance 14 2017? Okay, yes. Okay, should it be the entire road? That, be, that's what we were just talking about back here. It should only be until until the parking lot. Until the, uh, where it goes over the behind lot. Taco Bell and all that. That's going to be just Yeah, I think today. the intent was to stop there in the parking lot. Yeah. yeah. The edge of Kroger's parking lot, so you can turn right. Well, people are coming in front of Kroger if they go right. north to the end, they, they would have come. to go right east yeah. on this road. Right. So make it a long way from the corner at, at Arby's. Two twenty-five. Whatever the cross street is. Is that actually? A that's not a city road. No. Yeah, that's a reference. Right? None, none, of that, none of that is clear to that stop sign in the Midwest. All that's right. So how would you work that? From Main Street to the first intersection at the private road. There you go. And the map that I was given, I thought it ended when it got to the park. You're saying, you're saying all that's road. I love that. I, I said entire road, road imagine it. Imagine it started at Maine and it ended at Parkland. Earlier on the meeting, someone said that it was the entire road all the way through. Yeah. Well, then that'd be all right. That would make sense. But I'm not, I'm not certain. I'm just saying. Well, I mean, that wasn't the intent, was it? Guys, to make it one way clear back to the back. No. I have a feeling if we look, what I'm guessing is that from the that intersection at Parkland. To the lift station is probably a right of way easement deeded over to us on that property. I yeah, you're probably right. It's probably an easement. Yeah, I would say you're right. The natural, so the road would end where you guys are talking. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I bet if we pulled up, that's probably the Google shows that there's a cloud walking lane. <laughs> so, can we leave the verbiage that way? That's not what Council Goodman said, or do we need some clarification? I think our signage would take care of it. Yeah, our signage would take care of it. But anybody reading it might be able to be honest. But I don't think anyone would be able to be 
say, oh, look at the organs to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> you open that candle. Oh, oh. If, if he only spent a week here. <laughs> You're going to be the first one I call Brian. <laughs> okay, do that. This is grammatical in that first paragraph where the town council of Rochester, city of Rochester, believes. Yeah, we're, we're a cat. Should, should be asserted. I wasn't going to say anything, but then make the brush something up. So. Where? The first paragraph. Oh. Give me Rochester on that. Oh. Language for the Dallas believes. There, it's an amendment. <laughs> As amended. As amended. <laughs> That'll have to be your vote. <laughs> okay, uh, I would entertain a second reading of 14-27 uh, traffic code amendment by uh, uh, title only. So move a second. Moved by Goodman and seconded by Heidi. Those in favor? It's unanimous. Ordinance number 14-2017, ordinance amending the traffic code. Any discussion? And uh, I would uh, entertain a motion to suspend the rules and move to the third reading of by title only of 14 27. So move second. Mason uh, made the motion. Goodman seconded. Those in favor? Yes. I have a question if we, should, if we should go forward with this or just take up to the next meeting. If there's anybody. To just to be sure. I can, I, I can ask. I'm, I'm, just, I'm going on the map that the city gave me to prepare the ordinance. It looked like it ended at, but I can. Yeah. I can. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. I can. I can, go to, I can go to the survey and get you a report. Yeah. They, can, they can weigh in on that if it's a concern. I just don't. Uh, uh, I mean, of all the things I would invest in a survey for, this wouldn't be. <laughs> up towards the top of the list. Okay. I mean, I, I guess I guess I'm not concerned about. Uh, well, help you out a little bit, John. It's, now enforcement. Uh, it, uh, it's going to be stop. You know, it's going to have stop bars, a stop sign. Yeah. Turn areas. Oh, I understand that. <laughs> I, I was just concerned about whether the length of it was continuous or. But I understand. I personally think that it goes right to the start to the to the start of what I call the parking lot. There. Yeah, and that was really concerning. Right. Yeah, that was certainly. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Those in favor? Unanimous. <coughs> Resolution 14 2017. Whereas the accounts herein named by reason for unforeseen expenses at the time the regular budget was adopted are insufficient for the needs of such accounts for the balance of 2017 and an emergency now exists for additional funds. Such emergency is hereby expressly found and declared. Section 1, there is hereby transferred the following amounts to the following accounts. General fund from wellness benefit $400 to office supplies $400. Park non-reverting operating fund, golf cart fuel $360 to park board wages $360. MBH fund from equipment $40,000 to professional services $40,000. Redevelopment Commission Fund from capital improvements $3,750 to professional services $3,750. Okay, a motion to accept resolution 14 2017. So moved. Moved, and I need a second. I'll second. Okay, moved and seconded. Those in favor signify by raising your hand. It's unanimous. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Those in favor? Thank you. We're going to adjourn. Thank you back there for your hands up. I would like to say before we stand up and leave that. Uh, well, I know we're here. So this, is, this is not official, so you can't hold my feet to the fire. But Merry Christmas to all of you. And thank you for a very good